Well, hello again, everyone. This is Nurse Mo, and welcome back to the Straight A Nursing Podcast. I am so excited that you are here and that you chose to spend your very precious free time with me. So before we get started talking about how to prepare for pharmacology, I do want to take a quick moment for a listener shout out. And this listener shout out goes to Joydy, who says, thanks. Appreciate all you do. My friend recommended your podcast to me. Glad I took the advice. I listened all through nursing school and now listen as a new grad nurse as refresher. Thank you. I just want to say thank you for taking the time to subscribe to the podcast and rate and review the podcast. Thank you so, so much. And I wish you the very best of luck in your new grad position. So you guys, if there is one class that nursing students pretty much across the board struggle with, it is pharmacology. Whether your school teaches it as a standalone class like mine did, or you're taught it here and there as you go throughout your program, you're probably going to find it challenging. But there are some things that you can do ahead of time to prepare. So dust off those anatomy and physiology resources and plan to spend some time reviewing these core concepts prior to starting pharmacology. Are you ready? Let's go through this. So one of the first things I want you to get really solid on is RAS. That's renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And this system will come into play a lot with medications aimed at affecting blood pressure. A great example is lisinopril, which is an ACE inhibitor. So if you know RAS, then you will understand why drugs like this work. And when you guys understand why drugs work because you understand the core concept behind it, you're not memorizing a bunch of stuff for pharmacology. You're applying concepts and connecting things together and applying it to your practice. So it gets so much easier when you look at it that way. The next thing that I want you to review before pharmacology begins is the autonomic nervous system. So go back to a and I know you covered it there and you probably found it a little bit confusing like maybe I did. Or maybe I'm speaking for myself here. So this is why this is one of those things that I absolutely needed to review and I reviewed it more than once. And in fact, even now when I'm learning about a medication that affects the autonomic nervous system, I still need to go back and review some components of that system. So this one is absolutely key. Recall that the autonomic nervous system includes that sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight, and the parasympathetic nervous system, that rest and digest. So if you guys have a solid understanding of the ANS, it's really going to help you as a foundation concept for pharmacology. I also want you to look at alpha and beta receptors. Many medications stimulate or block these alpha and beta receptors. So if you have that core understanding of what these receptors do, then you'll automatically know what these drugs do in the body. So a great example is metoprolol, which is a beta blocker and phenylephrine, which is an alpha-1 agonist. So if you know nothing else about labetalol than the fact that it is, or I'm sorry, metoprolol, aside from the fact that it is a beta blocker, you kind of already know most of the stuff you need to know about metoprolol and labetalol. It's going to block conduction at that AV node. And when you understand what that does in the body, well, it's going to decrease heart rate, it's going to decrease blood pressure, then you understand why we use it for patients who have hypertension. Sometimes it's used for patients who have rapid ventricular rates in things like atrial fibrillation. So again, understanding the core concepts about these receptors is absolutely Absolutely crucial if you want to understand medications, not just memorize them. 
Another one to really dial in on you guys is cholinergic agonists and antagonists. So cholinergic agonists are used to treat uh, disease conditions like myasthenia gravis and Alzheimer's disease, while those antagonists, also called anticholinergics, treat things like bradycardia. So atropine is an excellent example of an anticholinergic that we use. It's also used to treat motion sickness, which is scopolamine, those patches that you see people sometimes have behind their ear. Maybe you've used them before. And bronchospasm. So atrovent is an excellent example of this. So cholinergic agonists and antagonists. Definitely want to review the foundation concept there. The other one to really review are the acetylcholine receptors, those muscarinic and nicotinic receptors. If you understand the difference between these two types of receptors, you will have that key foundation knowledge that can help you really understand how drugs work and what side effects they are likely to cause. And then a general understanding of key neurotransmitters and what they do can help you understand a wide range of medications. These include norepinephrine, acetylcholine, dopamine, serotonin, epinephrine. Understanding neurotransmitters will really go a long way to helping you understand pharmacology. And then I want you to go back and look at the endocrine system, basically from head to toe, from start to finish. Endocrine is really difficult. It's a very challenging anatomy and physiology topic. But when you layer on the pharmacology component, it really gets to be overwhelming a lot of times. So go back and review the endocrine system and how those feedback loops work. This will help you understand a lot of medications. It'll help you understand a lot of disease conditions, which are often treated with a hormone of some kind. So again, understanding how they work means conceptualizing information, not just mindlessly, blindly memorizing. So here's a couple more things that I want you to do to help make pharmacology easier. So if you have extra time, and I hope that you do, between now and the time pharmacology starts, is take a moment, you know, go online, do a little search, or you can download my free guide, but take a moment to make a list of some common suffixes and which drug classes they relate to. Suffixes, prefixes, roots, there's parts of the drug names themselves that will clue you in to which drug class they belong to. So when I earlier said labetalol instead of metoprolol, you notice they both had the same suffix. It was olol, O-L-O-L. They're both beta blockers. So learning key things like that means that if you're presented with a medication that you've never heard of before, but it's got olol on the end, you know, oh, that looks like a beta blocker. I already know a ton about beta blockers. I pretty much know what I need to know about this medication. So using that resource can help you a long way. And again, you can either just look that up online or you can download my free guide, which I will link to in the show notes. And then as you are learning about drug classes, you need to get clarity on the difference between pharmacologic drug classes and therapeutic drug classes. And this can be a struggle for a lot of students. So a pharmacologic classification is going to tell you why and how a medication works. For example, beta blocker is a pharmacologic classification. We know what it does. It blocks conduction at the AV node. So we know what it does and we know how it works and we know why it works. So we know a lot about a drug because of its pharmacologic class. A therapeutic classification, on the other hand, is basically going to tell you what it does, what its therapeutic effect is. So again, 
that metoprolol that we've been talking about. It's a beta blocker when we look at the pharmacologic class, but when we look at the therapeutic class, it's an antihypertensive. The therapeutic class basically tells us what it does. Other drugs such as dexmedetomidine just have a therapeutic class when you go to look them up, say for instance in your Davis drug guide, and that medication is in the therapeutic class of a sedative hypnotic medication. So it tells us what it does. So if you guys want to get a jump start on reviewing pharmacology core concepts covering things like RAS, the autonomic nervous system, the neurotransmitters, the alpha beta, the cholinergic, anticholinergic. I go over all of this in Crucial Concepts Bootcamp, which is my prep course to help you learn how to be a successful nursing student. It teaches you the foundation knowledge that you need to rely on to understand the nursing content that you'll be presented with in nursing school. So I go over and do a review of those things in Crucial Concepts Boot Camp. So I want to just read a quick review from Ashley, who had a great experience with Boot Camp. And she says, Crucial Concepts Boot Camp was an amazing way to prepare before nursing school started. I felt so much more ready and have done great on all of my exams after learning how to learn like a nurse from Mo. Thanks for everything. Ashley, thank you. If you're listening, I really very much appreciate the feedback and that you've had such great success. So if you guys want to look at Crucial Concepts Bootcamp, I will include a link to that. If you enroll before January 18th, you can get in my live workshop where I go step by step with you to help you get organized for nursing school. It's a workshop I've been doing for a few years now. It's super fun. And we have a really, you know, good time just getting our systems in place and students find it really beneficial and helpful. So I will link to that as well. And then if you're looking for ways to get organized, I also have planners that are for nursing students specifically. I'll link to those as well. Again, I always advocate that you use a planner of some kind, whether it's the ones I create, you make your own, you use your Google calendar, you buy one at Walmart. I don't care. I just want you to use a planner and use it consistently. So I'll link to the ones I make. You can check it out and see if they will work for you. So I hope that you join me back here again next week, I have a very special episode for you where I will be interviewing my sister-in-law, Hannah, who is a labor and delivery nurse, because I know a lot of you are really interested in exploring L&D nursing as a career option. So she's going to break it down, tell you what labor and delivery nursing is like, and her journey to get there. She actually started out in mom baby nursing as a new grad and how that translated into her working now at a high high acuity, large metropolitan hospital in the labor and delivery unit. So I can't wait to bring that to you guys next week. And if you want to make sure you never miss an episode, simply subscribe to this podcast and the episodes will automatically be added to your library every Thursday. See you next week. Bye for now. This podcast is brought to you by Straight A Nursing.